right now on Full Force Nature. Blue skies in Las Vegas quickly give way to monsoon rains that trap a woman in a raging torrent. Plummeting winter temperatures turn Denver roads into a sheet of ice, prompting drivers to jump from their moving cars. Then, some tourists in Texas find themselves the target of hailstones the size of baseballs. An unrelenting downpour sends a 10-foot wall of water on a rampage through a small village, forcing victims to rooftops. And sit in the passenger seat when a man drives inside a blinding Kansas dust storm. Extreme weather told by the people who lived through it right now on Full Force Nature. Weather affects us every day. Most of the time, that effect is insignificant. But other times, it takes over our lives. Las Vegas, Nevada, a city of lights and fantasy shimmering in the desert. The weather in Las Vegas most of the time is, is beautiful weather. I mean, that's why I think half the people move here. It's mostly sunny, hot in the summers. But it isn't always blue skies for this sparkling oasis. And on Tuesday, August 19th, all bets are off. Seasonal showers in Northwest Vegas suddenly take a turn for the worse. It was supposed to rain. I mean, everyone expected rain. Nobody expected it to be the amount that fell that day. While driving towards an assignment in Northwest Vegas, local news videographer Oscar Palomo witnesses a drastic change in weather. It just seemed like a normal rain leaving downtown, but as you're driving and you're driving, it's getting harder, it's getting faster, and you're starting to see more of the cars stuck on the side of the road. You're starting to see more accidents a little bit more chaos going on and a little bit more water collecting everywhere. Now, a torrential downpour is unrelenting. It quickly overwhelms the flood control intakes. It was like driving in a car wash once we got out to the area because there was just so much rain. The wipers couldn't go fast enough to sweep it away. In less than an hour, this severe thunderstorm has dumped as much as five inches of rain in the Las Vegas basin. One inch in a day would be normal to, to flood a street a good amount. But when, when you're talking about the amount of rain that fell that particular day, it was way too much rain in too short of a period of time. Massive flash floods transform city streets into churning waterways. I, I was almost speechless in the sense that I'd never seen so much rain before falling down and seeing the roads all flooded before in my whole entire life. Traffic comes to a halt, and motorists find themselves at the mercy of the storm. It was during rush hour, so a lot of cars were on the road. People trying to get home to their families, but they found themselves stuck in a situation that they could not avoid. The situation found them. Raging floodwaters surround vehicles, trapping drivers in their cars. One woman climbs through her driver's window to the roof of her car. Unable to help, Oscar grabs his camera and starts taping, hoping rescue teams arrive soon. The water was coming from every conceivable angle at you. And if you weren't standing still, um, holding on to something, you might be swept away. The woman collapses on the roof in shock. The water is rising fast. Police search and rescue helicopters rush to the flooded intersection. Emergency crews knew it, that they had a situation on their hand. When so much rain was pouring down, and you see so many helicopters in the air flying, trying to rescue people, it was just very shocking. It was like a punch in the face. In a race against time, a rescuer is lowered to the raging floodwaters. They were obviously working in a progression where the people in most peril, people in most danger, were getting the help they needed first. But I think there was a sense of fear in everyone, knowing, is there going to be enough helicopter service to come save me? 
With only moments to spare, the exhausted woman is plucked from her vehicle and lifted to safety. But this is just one of dozens of people in need of help. People were being rescued at the last second. I mean, you can see the water literally engulfing the car just mere seconds later. It all seemed like a bad nightmare to me. It was very surreal. No one is safe from the mounting waters. Even heroic firefighters are caught in the flood in their efforts to save victims. It's not a common thing to see people who do the rescuing needing to be rescued, but knowing what I know now, seeing what I saw, it makes perfect sense because those emergency personnel place themselves in a far greater danger than I could ever imagine trying to help people. The water is not the only problem. Dangling on the helicopter line, victims and rescuers swing dangerously close to power lines that line the roads. The flood leaves its mark on the homes, hearts, and minds of those in the community. This flood has been the worst flood I've ever encountered in my whole entire life. I don't think I'd want to be involved in anything like that ever again. Drivers in the Mile High City are accustomed to winter driving conditions. But Lieutenant Fred Burke of the Denver Fire Department knows that things can transform rapidly. Dealing with the weather in Colorado can be very challenging. In any given day, 24-hour period, uh, weather can change very dramatically. As the morning commute begins, warmer temperatures quickly plunge well below freezing. What was melting snow and slush just hours earlier is now black ice. An ice-covered hill sets off a chain reaction of cars crashing into other cars. Lieutenant Burke was one of the first responders on the scene. What we expected to find was a fender bender, a low speed impact accident, and which is indeed what we found. One car had slid through the stop sign and then was T-boned by another car. It may look as harmless as bumper cars, but the results could have been deadly. Some members were starting to open their doors and jump out of this, out of the moving vehicle. So now what we had is civilians attempting to get off this slick road, and we were, you know, feared for their safety. Drivers find themselves in the icy grip of Mother Nature and gravity. It didn't matter what type of driver you were at this point. Once you were over the hill, you were in complete, at the complete mercy of Mother Nature. In all my time in Denver, this is the only time that I've experienced this type of an accident to this magnitude. This is uh, definitely the largest piece of sheet ice I've seen on a hill that size. The firemen hurry to close off access to the hill. Our number one priority was to get to the top and try to stop the vehicle. But not before some 30 cars are damaged in this icy pilot. Fortunately, there were only a few injuries, none of them serious. Coming up on Full Force Nature, Heavy rains force a wall of water through an English village that takes cars out to sea. But first, a summer hailstorm sends a group of storm chasers running for cover. Welcome back to Full Force Nature. Weather captivates us because we never truly know what it has in store. When seasoned storm chaser Roger Hill arrives with a group southeast of Silverton, Texas, nature unleashes its full fury. There was already thunderstorms that were starting to develop. And I'm like, oh my goodness, we, I gotta get my people and get out there because I don't wanna miss anything. With the weather threatening and supercells all around, a funnel cloud suddenly appears. He just had a feeling, just by the way that the storm looked, that, that it would probably turn into a very large tornado. And we decided to keep going farther south and put ourselves directly in the path of this funnel cloud that was rapidly descending toward the ground. And the longer we sat there, the larger and more violent this tornado became. Just get in, run, hurry, hurry! Keep going, keep going. 
With his years of experience, Roger says he knows he can get what seems dangerously close to the tornado. A little more, a little more. I'm going, I'm fine, I'm fine. Keep going, we're fine, we're fine. We were in a position on the north side of the tornado to make sure that, that we were totally out of harm's way. I didn't want anybody to get out of the car because we were almost close enough to, uh, to, to get debris falling from the tornado. What a tornado! My God! The tornado veers and dissipates, as predicted. Oh, my God, it's wrapping up right in front of us! But this weather party has just begun. They immediately encounter incredible winds from the backside of another tornado in the area. This tornado was a multi-vortex tornado. In other words, there were several smaller tornadoes within one larger tornado. Uh, generally, those type of tornadoes can be, can be quite damaging. What Roger sees next is something totally unexpected, dangerously large hail. We're going to lose every window. I'm serious. We're going to have to go up a little farther. In the wide open spaces of the Texas Panhandle, shelter is hard to come by. But Roger knows time is of the essence. The wind started picking up as a new tornado grew and intensified directly in front of us. And it started driving that hail into the side and the top of the van at uh, 60, 70 mile an hour. Oh, 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 and it didn't take long for, uh, for a large hailstone to hit the side window on the van and just shatter it out. Another hailstone hit my windshield and, uh, and shattered it too. And you could, you could hear and just feel the concussion of the hail, these large hailstones that were hitting the side of the van and the roof. We're seeking shelter in somebody's garage! Luckily, Roger spots a carport next to a farmer's house just up the road. The van and its dome cannot fully get under the carport, but there is temporary relief from the elements. Everybody was just mesmerized by the hail that was falling from this thing. Everybody actually stayed in the van and just kept filming, shooting video and taking pictures. And then finally I told everybody, we got to get out of this van and get underneath this shelter. After things calm down, the group ventures out under clearing skies. They marvel at the unusually large hailstones. They were like kids in a candy store. They were all picking up these hailstones and just videoing them and looking at them in their hands and thinking, wow, look at this thing. The power of this hailstorm shows in the extensive damage sustained by Roger's van. I had a, a left side window, driver's side window, that was uh, knocked out. Uh, my windshield was shattered. Uh, my windshield wipers were broken. I had a headlight that was broken. I had pieces of molding and plastic on the van that, that uh, were you know, cracked or, or, or knocked off. Oh my God! Oh my God, don't go anywhere! What a storm! Woo! Roger's group experienced that day something few others do. It's an experience that will stay with them through their lives and stands as a lasting impression of the power of weather. Coming up on Full Force Nature, experience a swirling windstorm from inside the vortex. But first, see what happens when an English village gets a month's worth of rain in just one afternoon. You're watching Full Force Nature. Cornwall, in southwest England, is famed for its mild climate year-round. It draws many vacationers who like to visit the picturesque seaside towns like Boscastle. A pleasant summer morning gives no indication to lifelong resident Paul Tyler that the weather will change. It was a lovely summer's day. And the friends that were staying with us headed off to the beach to sunbathe and to surf. Best surfing in Europe in this area. Even when storm clouds begin to threaten the area, Tyler remains unconcerned. Nobody coming to this village or any part of this part of Cornwall could have imagined that this weather was going to turn in such a dramatic and dangerous way. 
While driving along a road, a major storm catches Tyler and his wife by surprise. We suddenly found ourselves in the midst of this huge storm. It wasn't just a quick storm. It went round and round us for about an hour and a half. At one point, we thought the water was going to come into the car. Even though we were on the top of the hill, we were on the main road up above the village, we thought we were in big trouble. In just a few hours, the town receives as much rain as it would in a month. I've never known a downpour like that. I've never seen anything like that going on for so long. I mean, you could hear the thunder, you could see the lightning all around us, and just streams of water. The river that runs through the heart of town suddenly floods its banks. We knew within a, a matter of a short time, we weren't just experiencing a little summer storm. We were in a major flash flood situation. Homes are ravaged. Cars are swept downstream like children's toys. Residents and tourists scramble to higher ground for safety. Quite clearly from the people around us, people coming back from lower down the road, uh, where cars had been swept away, they were in very great danger. From rescue helicopters above, Residents are seen trapped by the raging waters, forced to their rooftops. British Coast Guard and Royal Air Force helicopters pluck them from danger. The helicopters were scrambled, and we could see them coming over and dropping people off in the fields very close to it. And we saw people who had been caught up in the floods. And I'm hoping and praying there'll be no fatalities. If there aren't any, it will be a miracle, because it's been, you know, frightful. Performing these life-saving missions presents significant dangers to the helicopter teams. This happens to be a very tight little valley. There were seven or eight of them constantly operating in this immediate area. And they had to operate by sight. They were just a few yards away from each other, pulling people out through the roofs. And of course, still with heavy rain. It, it was an extraordinary job that they did. In the end, seven helicopters were used to pull dozens of people to safety from rooftops. Left in the storm's wake are millions of dollars in damage. Remarkably, no one is killed by the flooding. What was so extraordinary about that afternoon was here these hundreds of cars, which in a matter of minutes were being swept down the road over the bridge and into the harbor. Not one single person was left in those cars. Despite the devastation, the town's plucky spirit survives. The community itself, the village community, were so extraordinary in the way in which they worked together to get things back on the, on the go again. You could feel it. A once-in-a-lifetime flood still bears its mark on the English coast. And Tyler will never look at a summer storm the same way again. Something that I've never experienced before, and I hope I never experience again. Coming up, an innocent drive across the Kansas prairie is interrupted by the full force of nature. Stop the gun! Welcome back to Full Force Nature. Be careful when you're driving through the Midwest. You might run smack into a swirling column of air known as a gust nato. That's what happened to storm chaser Jim Bishop as he made his way across southern Kansas. Pass by a group of trees, and you can see the gust nato actually starting to accelerate all of a sudden, and we started screaming, you know, oh! The things were starting to get exciting. Gust nados are mini tornadoes that sometimes form during thunderstorms when rapidly descending air hits the ground. And you can see dirt actually being kicked upward because the cold air is hitting the ground and then being forced up. The gust nado propels the Kansas topsoil into a violent swirling mess. The gust nado started to accelerate right towards us and we, we intercepted it right along the road. For the storm chaser, 
This seems like a harmless anomaly. It was exciting to be hit by a rotating column of air that looked like a tornado. But when visibility suddenly drops to zero, his excitement turns to panic. We kind of had gone, you know, skirted off the road a little bit. I think that the winds had kind of jolted the car. I was a little freaked out that maybe we were going to hit something. Jim brings the car under control, takes a few deep breaths, and counts his lucky stars. The Gusknado lived for less than a minute and did no damage to any structures. But even this seemingly harmless weather has given Jim a glimpse of how quickly nature can turn the tables. That's all for this edition. Tune in next time for even more amazing encounters with weather on Full Force Nature. To be sure that you are prepared for the full force of nature, your local forecast is next, right here on the Weather Channel.